G'day and welcome back to the channel. Now, this thing, I still haven't flown the damn thing. It's like, pfft, the weather has conspired against me. We've had so many dull grey days, rainy days, windy days, and one thing I thought I'd better do a video on, because this is quite important. Uh, normally, I fly safely. Well, I always try and fly safely, actually, to be honest. Doesn't always mean I'm totally compliant with regulations, because as we know, you know, I, I got investigated for flying a tiny toy in my backyard, because the rules aren't always up to speed with the requirements of safety, and sometimes, you know, you know anyway, um, that's something for another video. But on that note, uh, please go to my community tab on this channel because you'll see I've posted something. CIA has a new director, a new head honcho, a new man at the top at CIA in New Zealand. And he seems like a breath of fresh air, to be totally honest. He seems to be bringing a new perspective to the whole issue of safety versus compliance. Now, he's basically said, let me paraphrase because I'm not reading it uh, from a screen or anything. Um, he's basically said that um, they're aware that the rules are not always a good fit and that sometimes a lack of compliance doesn't mean a lack of safety. Oh, that's a brilliant, that's what I've been saying. I've been saying this for a year now, since the first time Karen complained about my videos. I, I've been saying this over and over again, and the old CAA was saying, oh no, no compliance, you can't be safe unless you're compliant. This guy, he brings a pragmatic view to things, a, a perspective that certainly seems to be a little more modern. Am I on an angle? I don't know. <laughs> I've just got the camera poked in the corner here because this is the home studio, edit studio, not the workshop. Anyway, so yeah, so this guy is a refreshingly um, clean broom he may be sweeping with. So I've put a community tab post up and it's a poll. I want you to know because what I'd like to do is um, introduce myself to the new guy and give him a bit of backstory, although I'm pretty sure there'll be a few people giving him the backstory already and, and vilifying me. But I'd like to perhaps uh, meet with him virtually, uh, most likely because COVID times and he's a long way away from here. And I'd like to interview him. I'd like to get some a dialogue going and perhaps do a video talking to this guy and get some ideas of where he's coming from because New Zealand may be, may be in the position where they can actually for once lead the world by showing that, well, regulations are a, an essential framework for safety, but they are not something that you should totally rely on. And maybe we can get some dialogue going and we can get some things working and make the whole place safer and just as importantly, protect the freedoms of people which are being lost hand over fist out there at the moment as regulators just go crazy, 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 crazy. And politicians are crazy. Everyone's crazy. We need just to bring a little bit of common sense, a bit of practicality back to the whole thing. And I'm not saying that this guy saying that, um, you know, safety is the overriding thing and compliance is necessary. Well, no, he's not saying that. But what I'm saying is this is not giving people permission to go out and break the rules because, oh, I know this is safe. No, 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 no. Um, the rules are still an essential framework. And where it is essential to maintain safety, I always follow the rules. I think people know that. And I also tell other people to follow the rules. It's only on those very, very few, very small occasions, such as when I'm flying a tiny whoop in my own backyard FPV and I don't have a spotter, that's when it's very patently obvious the rules are not a good fit for that particular situation. So I will continue to do that. And I will argue that if they, anyone that wastes a single minute of their time investigating me for that technical breach of the regulations needs to be shown the door. And hopefully that's the attitude at CAA now. But I was talking about regulation because, as I said, I've got this thing. I haven't test flown it yet because on the few, the very few occasions when the weather's been suitable, I haven't had an observe, a, a spot or an observer available. And believe it or not, I'm not going to fly this without an observer because this is a new craft to me and to most people. It is a heavy craft, 800 grams of weight. It's a very fast craft. It would, to, to me, and I'm just looking at this from my own perspective, it would not be safe for me to fly this without an observer. Yeah, it probably would be, but I don't want to take the risk that something goes wrong and someone gets hurt. I want to make sure I'm totally 100% compliant with regulations when I fly this thing. Not only to be compliant, but also to make sure there's no chance, that no matter how small, of someone getting hurt if this thing goes berserk or if someone wanders into my flight area and I don't see them. Uh, because I don't just don't know what it looks like through this thing. I haven't flown it before. I've had... 16 years of FPV quadcopter experience, but this is a totally new type of quad really. It's the hybrid between the, the camera drone and freestyle. So I don't want to take that risk. I don't want, I'm Mr. Safety. Yes, that's me. I'm Mr. Safety. So I don't want to take that risk. So I'm going to have an observer with me when I test fly this. So I have to get, everything has to, to all the things must align. The weather must be okay. It must not be raining. I must have a place where I can fly it, where there are not a lot of people around or no one around. And I must have an observer. Those four factors, they haven't lined up yet. And that's really 
really, really annoying me. Um, I could have flown at the airfield last weekend, except for the damn geofencing. So that's the problem I'm facing with this little machine at the moment. The reason why on my RC Model Reviews channels, you haven't seen any hands-on of me with this, but there is a lot of other stuff out there that you can look at in the meantime. But the reason I'm making this video also is to tell you that this is a real problem. This is going to be a real problem. And I'm not talking about the craft itself. I'm talking about the rules, the regulations surrounding FPV. Now, to date, let's be totally honest, I think everyone who has ever flown FPV has flown without a spotter. In just every country in the law, that, every country in the world that I'm aware of, it is a legal requirement to have a spotter when you're flying FPV. The only exception to that is in Canada, if you're flying a sub-250 craft where there's no prescriptive rules, you can fly without a spotter, as long as you're able to maintain the safety of people and property and aviation. If you can do that without a spotter, you're good to go. Everywhere else in the world, it is a legal requirement, whether it adds to safety or not, it's a legal requirement that you have a spotter. And I noticed carefully in all the DJI promotional material where you see a pilot flying one of these things, he's got a spotter. So they're aware of that too. Now the problem comes that a lot of people who currently fly camera drones do so without a spotter because they're saying, well, I'm flying line of sight. I can see the drone. I look at my screen, but I can look up and see the drone. Technically speaking, technically speaking, when they look away from the drone to the screen, they're flying FPV and they should have a spotter. But nobody really cares. I haven't seen anyone prosecuted for that, except perhaps in a case in New Zealand where a, a camera drone hit a paraglider, the, the prosecution or the judge did state that the pilot was too focused on his screen and not on the craft. So that was a factor in him getting a fine of $1,000 or something. I think it was quite a stiff fine because he flew into the control wires of a paraglider. And it could have been a nasty accident, but fortunately it wasn't. The guy was an idiot for flying near a paraglider in the first place. Um, so yeah, so what's going to happen? What's going to happen when every man and his dog mortgages their house to buy one of these and goes out to the local park and says, Meh, I'll just fly on my own. What's going to happen? Well, I don't know. Um, certainly I would not recommend it from a safety perspective because these are 800 grams at 140 kilometers an hour, 80 miles an hour. That's going to do more than give you a bruise. This is this could be a lethal weapon in the hands of the wrong people, inexperienced people. And trust me, I've seen a few videos on YouTube. People that have previously had years of experience with a Mavic, getting one of those and turning it into a little ball of wires and plastic, smacking it up real quick because it's a totally different experience. And they'd used the simulator previously to get themselves familiar with it, but it just doesn't, it's not the same as flying the damn thing. It really isn't the same. So it is a worry to me, the safety aspect. And I think you're going to see regulators starting to clamp down on this observer requirement. And that's going to bounce back on us, the FPV community, the responsible FPVers who do fly without observers when it is safe to do so. And as I must emphasize, when it is safe to do so, which means you are flying in an area where there are no other people, where there's no property that isn't yours or it could be damaged. And when you're flying craft that you're totally familiar with, you've got the experience, you've got the skill, you've got the, the um, knowledge to do it safely. And when you're flying in a shielded operation below the trees where there's not going to be any manned aviation. So under those low situations, quite often it's just a spotter is just someone else to get in the way, someone else to be injured. If you're the only person are there, then you can't injure anybody. If you've got a spotter there, well, that's two people that could get injured. You and the spotter. So I, 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 spotters are essential. Uh, I believe spotters should be used when it's essential to maintain safety. And that's where we disagree, the regulators and I, and on that particular subject. I don't know about the new guy, but previous regulators have totally disagreed with me on that. Oh, he's got to have a spotter. Which is, as I said, with the little tiny drone in the garden, I think I've proven that to be untrue. But Overseas and around the world, regulators are going to start looking at this. And if somebody gets hurt because someone flies one of these things without a spotter and injures somebody, then spotters are going to become the subject du jour. There will be people out there looking, trying to find FPVs without spotters. It's going to be really, really damaging to the hobby. I just hope it doesn't happen. Hopefully, all the people who have bought these things will be so keen to show them off with their friends that they'll take their friends out with them and, and have spotters in the form of their friends. I don't know if that's going to happen. I certainly hope that it does. But the other thing is, in some countries, FPV is just really almost, almost illegal. Take Australia, for example. I just looked it up here on, on, uh, on the Google webs. And in Australia, if you want to fly FPV outdoors, you must apply for a CASA approval to operate FPV recreationally. That means you've got to apply and get permission to fly FPV, get written permission from CASA, that's the equivalent of the FAA or CAA, it's the Australian equivalent. You've got to get written permission before you can fly FPV or or 
apply for CASA approval to operate extended visual line of sight, blah, 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 that's if you want to fly BV loss uh, or extended line of sight, or be a current member of a model aircraft association CASA, that has CASA approval for FPV operations. And at the moment, I think the MAAA is the only approved organisation in Australia. So if you want to fly this, anything other than line of sight, which you wouldn't buy this to fly at line of sight, would you? You would not buy this to fly at line of sight. And it doesn't really have a, a, a smartphone option or a tablet or a screen option because that screen is a raw feed. It doesn't have the same functionality as the DJI app does on a Mavic or whatever. So you can't use that screen really as easily. Um, so you're going to be wearing the goggles. So if you want to fly this in Australia, you've either got to apply yourself for permission from CASA to um, to fly it, FPV, or you've got to belong to the MAAA. This will be a money spinner for the MAAA because anyone who buys one of these really has to join MAAA or they're breaking the law when they fly it, FPV. Interesting, isn't it? And in other countries, there's probably all sorts of other things. Remember, it is an 800 gram quad, so in Canada, um, it, it has prescriptive rules. There's a lot of stuff you can't do with that. And in the EU, there's all sorts of stuff, I don't know, that's based on weight and distances, and oh, it's just too complicated for me. I mean, children have to follow these rules. How the, I can't understand them. How are children gonna follow them? I don't know. And in America, of course, you have to sit an exam soon before you're able to even look at one of those. So yeah, this whole thing's opened up a bit of a Pandora's box. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna, because we're gonna have these people out there completely ignoring the rules. And as I say, sometimes I ignore the rules, but only when it's safe to do so. But the people we've got coming in now, they are not, and they don't have enough experience with FPV and this kind of thing to accurately determine if what they're doing is safe or not, because they don't know what they're gonna expect. They, don't, they have no, no idea what they're doing, so how can they be capable of anticipating and calculating the risks involved? It's a worry, it's a real worry. I just hope that someone doesn't get hurt, but I fear that someone will. That's not DJI's fault, I might add. That's the fault of whoever's flying the drone. And one other thing, I'm doing a video on it now, and I put another post on, my, post on my community tab. Always check my community tab, tab on this channel. I, I put stuff up there, polls and things, and it doesn't necessarily get promoted out very much. So, you know, I might get 10, 12,000 views on a video, but I might get a few hundred views on the community tab. So make it a point to check the community tab every day or every time you log into YouTube. Go to the XJet community tab. Have a look. There might be something interesting there when it's not worth me making a video on it. But the other thing I'm going to do is I'm doing a video telling you why I've sold the Bugatti, why I've sold my Bugatti Chiron to buy another battery for one of these, because that's how much money it costs. About $3 million or something, I don't know. But yeah, um, that's just looking at who should be buying this drone, why they'd buy it. Because I've got to tell you, this drone has, has put an ax through the center of the community, the FPV community. We've got people saying, it's a, it's a piece of rubbish, it's junk. And I'll put a video up showing Thomas, a bit martyr from uh, BMS Web or uh, BMS Thomas flying this thing around a racing track. And oh my goodness, that was great. Look at the comments on that one. It's on my RC Model Reviews channel. Go and have a look at the comments. Brilliant. We've got half the people saying, wow, that's fantastic. It works much better than I thought it would. And the rest of them saying, it's a brick. It's a small windowless building. It'll crash. It'll break on the first turn. It'll hit a, hit a gate and the arms will fly off. And the, the, everyone's right. Everybody is correct. Every, there's no losers. Everybody's perspective is correct, depending on where you're standing in the line. Because some people will hate and do hate this drone with a passion and a vengeance. And other people love it. They love it like their firstborn child. And I'm going to explain to you why, they have that, why we have that difference and why everybody is right. Nobody's wrong. Everybody's opinion is right about this drone. And where do I stand on this whole thing? Well, you just have to watch that video and find out. But in the meantime, thank you for watching. And um, it's getting a little bit lighter outside. Maybe I will get a flight in because my wife is due back soon. We might be able to rip down the park and I might be able to burn a battery on this thing and see how we get on. It'll all be, I'm very late to the party, of course, but then again, I'm better able to form my own opinion and give you my honest thoughts on this particular product. In the meantime, thank you for watching. As you can see, I'm editing, I've got stuff to do. Um, I'm reviewing something. I'm reviewing this on my RC Model Reviews channel. It's not the DJI controller, but it kind of looks similar, doesn't it? Anyway, and I'm also reviewing this, this thing here. Here we go. Every man and his dog's reviewed this, but I'm reviewing this too. It's the Beta FPV 95X something or other. And I'm gonna tell you why this is really good and why this, yeah, it's okay. All right, there you go. Thanks for watching. I gotta go. Too much to do. And the sun may be about to come out. Stay tuned for that. Bye for now.